you gozaimasu. Good morning, good afternoon, um, good evening, um, wherever you guys are, whatever time um, you guys are. Hello and welcome to another Japan Guide live stream. And today we'll be um, visiting Aomori Prefecture and in particular um, a fish market, the Aomori Fish Market in Aomori City. Um, hello, where are you guys from? Let me know where you guys are from in the comments. And oh, hello. And uh, and since we're going to be talking about Aomori Prefecture, I was wondering, uh, uh, have you guys ever heard of uh, Aomori Prefecture and what have you heard about it? Um, gonna take a few moments for you guys to like get on the chat and oh wow, lots of you guys are from like the states. Hello. Um, yeah, let me know uh, in the chat like what you guys know about Aomori Prefecture and. Yeah, what you guys know or have you guys ever been to Aomori? I'm gonna take some time, wait for you guys to respond. Hello! Wow, you guys are like from all over the country. Well, um, I'm in Japan right now and uh, it's 10 a.m. here and uh, you know, it's kind of cloudy outside like like last week it was like super sunny and like really hot and then today boom kind of cool and chilly and like it's i'm pretty sure it's at least five degrees colder it is than it was yesterday i feel like i should like put a jacket i thought it was summer right yeah um Nice, nice to see where, like, you guys are from, like, everywhere in the world. So nice. Wow. So, yeah, we're um, just waiting for uh, some people to get on the chat um, or get live with us. And today, just a recap, we're talking about um, Aomori Prefecture and we're heading into Aomori City. Yeah, some of you guys uh, mentioned... Uh, Ross mentioned that the hiking is great. Yes, the hiking is great in uh, in the Tohoku region in general. And um, apples, uh, Eda Tan mentioned uh, apples. Yes, Aomori apples are amazing. Um, yeah, Joe mentioned very good hiking in Aomori. And, uh, yes, what else was there? Aomori, Aomori garlic, um, Shadow Da PK had Aomori garlic. Now that's a really good thing. Um, have I ever eaten Aomori garlic? Is that a famous thing? It could be, it could very well be. Uh, Ashley asked, um, Reina, are you already in Aomori? I'm in uh, the studio right now and we uh, filmed the video, the, the video that we're going to watch later, uh, about a month ago, I guess. Um, so that's when we went. I am not in Aomori right now. But I have to say, I've been to Aomori a couple of times and, uh, it's, every time has been like great. And I felt like every time I go, I'm like, this is the best trip of my life. And then I go again and I'm like, no, this is the best trip of my life. And every trip is the best trip of my life in Aomori. Yeah, Marlon says that's uh, the best stop before continuing your journey to Hokkaido via the Tohoku Shinkansen. Totally agree. Stop in Aomori, then go to Hokkaido. You're not gonna you're not gonna regret it. Um Eugene is asking, like, how much for the budget for the sashimi bowl? Uh so the video that we're gonna watch later, um, we're going to be also making our own personalized um, sashimi bowl. And I think um, you could budget about like a hundred and uh, one thousand five hundred yen or about 15 US dollars. But it really depends on how much you want to eat. Um, and uh, you could buy tickets in sets of five. Um, so thousand five hundred yen. That's a pretty good ballpark. Like a, or you could do like a thousand to two thousand yen. I think that would be better. A thousand to two thousand yen, which is about ten to twenty dollars, and I think for one bowl of seafood, one seafood bowl, that's pretty good, I think. Um, all right. So now that uh, yeah, no worries about it. Uh, so nice to see where you guys 
from everywhere and uh, answering, like asking lots of questions. Um, so today we're talking about Aomori Prefecture and in, well, specifically we're zooming in to uh, Aomori Fish Market in Aomori City. And um, before that, um, before heading straight into the video, I thought I would do like a short introduction to um, Aomori Prefecture. And uh, as some of you have already mentioned, hiking is great in Aomori. Apples are also super delicious. Um, the seafood is also great in um, uh, the seafood is also great in Aomori. So I'm gonna do like a short introduction to the entire prefecture and where it's located and how to get there and like some of the nice spots to see when you're in the prefecture. So um, yeah, um, let's get started on. Not the video, we're not going to start on the video yet, we're just going to do like a short introduction. So this is, um, as you can see on the screen, um, this is um, Aomori Prefecture. It's the northernmost prefecture of the main island of Japan. And um, so like, think of the main island of Japan, you've got like Hokkaido right on top, and like Aomori is like just below it. And it's the one of the few prefectures that's surrounded by like bodies of water. It's got the Sea of Japan on one side and the Pacific Ocean on the other side. And like in the middle, that's the Tsugaru Strait. Um, so Aomori Prefecture, really northernmost prefecture. And I think there are not many other prefectures that are surrounded by water. We've got Hokkaido, which is an island. Okinawa, which is also an island. Um, and like the, the two ends, I think a lot of the other prefectures have either one or two sides of it touching the water. So that's um, Aomori Prefecture. And of course, uh, somebody has already mentioned in the chat, like the Tohoku Shinkansen, that's the, chink that's the bullet train that you want to take when you're um, visiting Aomori. So at the northernmost area, you can see like this um, part that I've circled on the map, is this like hook or axe-like um, peninsula on um, Aomori. And that is the Shimokita Peninsula. It's got like it's wild, rugged. There are like this, like one single train line going there, and it's also known for its mountains and like this um, virgin beach forest in the Shimokita Peninsula. And there are like two big um, sightseeing spots in the peninsula. The first one is Osorezan or Mount Osore, and it is one of the um, one of the I guess one of the few sacred or one of the top one of Japan's three most sacred places and um, it's also like a really volcanic area and it's that you when you get there you can see like so this is um, Mount Osore that's like the volcanic area and um, volcanic landscape it makes the area look really mysterious and it's said to resemble the world of Buddha so you got your like sulfur lakes like the blue lakes and like the stones and everything and like the landscape kind of makes it resemble like the Buddhist hell and paradise so definitely um, put this on your list if you want to look for like a temple that looks really kind of mysterious and um, kind of like otherworldly so that's the Osorezan the next one is Cape Oma I don't know how many of you have heard of um, Cape Oma but some of you would have heard of like Oma Tuna now Oma Tuna as you can see, um, Oma Tuna is like one of the most, um, I guess, well-known brands of uh, tuna. And it's all caught in the Tsugaru Strait, like the waters between um, Hokkaido and Aomori. So tunas from there are fetched like a really, really high price. So if you're thinking about like, every time if you like go to a sushi restaurant and you'd see like, oh, this tuna is like Oma Tuna, you know it's going to be good. So they are like Oma tuna is like so good. Like usually in the first auction of the year, um, in Toyosu Market, uh, the tunas that fetch the highest price are like the the Oma tunas. Uh, I think in twenty nineteen, think what was it in twenty nineteen, the Oma tuna sold for like it was almost three hundred kilograms, and it sold for you know, a crazy amount of money, something like 3 million US dollars or like 330 million yen, which is like a lot of zeros. I think million has like six zeros and like 300, but almost 300 US dollars for just like, for like a 300 kilogram of like, 
tuna. That's pretty impressive. And I think this year the tuna, the Oma tuna, which was about like 200 kilograms, I think it sold for about $200,000. So not crazy expensive, but still, you know, like a decent price. So yeah, first tuna of the year and um, Oma tuna is like top grade. You know, it's going to be good stuff if you see it on the menu. Okay, next, moving on south, um, we have Hachinohe. Um, Hachinohe is uh, along the Pacific Ocean and it's also the start of the approximately 1,000 kilometer long Michinoku coastal trail which leads all the way to Fukushima. So it's a thousand kilometers. Um, it's pretty insane. Uh, like you, you could hike the entire like 1,000 kilometers but you could also just you know do it in like short trips, um, do like sections and parts of it along the way. Um, this Michinoku coastal trail it actually connects all the, the coastal cities and the towns that were um, uh, along the coast from Hachinohe all the way to Fukushima in the south and uh, a lot of these towns were badly affected by the you know the 2011 earthquake and tsunami and but now you know, like a lot of the places have you know been re reconstructed so the trail is entirely scenic and you can see like coastal views and like cliffs and everything um, but there are also some parts which remain as it was so you can see like the destruction caused um and you get also you you also get to like visit the villages and the towns along the way so it's kind of nice to actually do it in parts or if you have time you could consider doing the uh the entire 1000 kilometers um this is like part of the trail near um hachinohe so it was kind of foggy when uh when we went but you know like it kind of feels like the highlands almost but we're actually by the coast and if you want more information about this uh, michinoku coastal trail um we made a video about it last year um it's a three-day hiking trip we didn't hike the entire 1000 kilometers in like three days um that would be kind of kind of insane but we what we did was we did like a mix of um hiking um we did a mix of hiking and driving and taking the train so definitely um, check it out if you want to do the Michinoku Coastal Trail. Next, we've got the, in Aomori Prefecture, we've also got the Towada Hachimantai National Park. Now it's one of the 34 national parks in Japan. And um, in this national park, we've got the Oirasi Stream and Towada Ko, or Lake Towada. So Lake Towada is like one of the largest caldera lakes on the main island of Honshu. And it's absolutely beautiful um and they're best known for um autumn colors somebody in the chat um earlier mentioned that um kyoto on oh no, why did i say kyoto um the aomori is famous for its autumn colors and yes uh autumn colors are really nice around like the in the towada hachimantai national park so this view was taken at um lake towada and that's where uh, you can go on like a little sightseeing cruise um, just to see the autumn colors and it's so beautiful. And this is um, this picture was taken at the Oirase stream and if you go during the fall this is um, this is the kind of scenery you can sort of expect to see hiking trails along the side walking in like the forest area and all like the different colors. Um, Alex is asking when is the best time to be in um, here um i guess if you mean here you mean um like aomori perhaps uh it depends on what you want to see uh if you want autumn colors then definitely in the fall say around like september october ish area time that's when you can see um autumn colors if not if you come in spring um yeah spring say like end april May ish or early May, that's when you get to see like um cherry blossoms. But fall fall leaves, then yes, like September, October, like this, late September, late September, October. Those would be like the really nice um autumn colors to see. And in next we're moving on to Hirosaki, the city of Hirosaki, which is known for its castle, Hirosaki Castle. Now um 
Hirosaki, like the, the city of Hirosaki is famous for um, apples and Hirosaki um, castle. So the castle grounds are super beautiful. Uh, we've got like lots of cherry blossoms over there. So if you go to Hirosaki, definitely you want to go during the sp spring. So you get to see like cherry blossoms and uh, go to the castle. You get like a two for one. You see the castle and you get to see like um, cherry blossoms. And it's like the cherry blossoms at Hirosaki Castle. It's like one of my, um, one of my top, I would say like top five cherry blossom spots in Japan, like personally. Um, so good that you kind of want to go twice. Uh, first when um, the cherry blossoms are at full bloom and another time when like the petals are starting to fall because it's like so, so, so beautiful. So this is the castle, like this picture that you can see is the castle with the cherry blossoms at full bloom. And this picture now it's from when um, the the petals are falling so like the moat is covered in like fallen petals and the cherry blossoms are still full and it's absolutely beautiful and one more thing um that hirosaki is famous for is apples somebody mentioned like aomori is like famous for apples and like the apple center of um aomori prefecture is in hirosaki um apple season is in um is in autumn so if you go like i guess october ish that's when you um that's when you get to go like apple picking and like eat like a bunch of nice apples and combine it with seeing like the fall colors um one of the so here's like short story um i think when was it about two years ago i went to um i went to hirosaki in the in in fall and I went apple picking. So, so apples in Aomori, like compared to the rest of Japan, like apples are like really, uh, well, apples are really cheap in Aomori. So if you go to like uh, the supermarket or whatnot, uh, apples are like a couple hundred, what, like the really nice apples are actually not too expensive. So I went apple picking and uh, I think I paid less than like 500 yen. It's probably closer to like 300 yen for all you can eat uh there's no time limit and just you know pick as many apples and eat as many as you want so so the staff was like they you know i paid my 300 yen um the staff was like okay um you can pick any apples from like the trees in this area so just go ahead um um like yeah so i was at this um apple orchard and they're like just pick any apples that you want and yeah, just try them and whatever leftover apples that you don't want to eat just put it in this basket and bring it back to the counter when you're done so i was like oh okay so so i went in and i was like oh this looks really good pick pick it tried it oh this looks really good picked it and try it yeah it's like 300 yen for all you can eat so so um question for everybody i spent about like 45 minutes at the at the apple orchard um, anybody want to guess how many apples I ate in um, that 45 minutes? So just for reference, um, one apple was about, it's about um, one and a half times the size of a tennis ball. So like slightly bigger than my fist. And 300 yen for all you can eat apples. <laughs> Shadow Fox says uh, I ate seven apples. Seven apples that are like one and a half times the size of um, uh, of my fist or one and a half times the size of a tennis ball. Oh, you guys are like, you guys think really highly of me. I like that. I like that. Um, okay. Uh, I, I'm so sorry to let you guys all down. <laughs> I, I, ate, I ate four apples. I ate four apples in 45 minutes. I didn't need to eat four apples but they were all so good i i ate four different kinds of apples and um i just couldn't waste it like i ate like a bit i thought maybe i should try something else but i was like oh i don't want to waste like half an apple so i ended up eating four sorry guys that was only four i'll do better next time i'll i'll, I'll aim for i'll try seven i'll try seven next time but it was so good so yeah if you go in the autumn during apple picking season 
definitely go for it. Go for it, and you you won't regret it. All right. So moving on to Shirakami Sanche. Um, it's on the like the western side of it, and really close to the Sea of Japan. And um, Shirakami Sanche is it kind of straddles both like Aomori and Akita pre Prefecture, and it's this large you know mountain range and. Um, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the oldest World Heritage Sites in Japan. It was, I think, designated in 1993, if I remember right. So in this uh, mountain range area, there are like two zones and one of them is the core zone and the other is the buffer zone. So the core zone is where, um, you know, most people are usually not allowed in. And the buffer, the buffer zone is where you can, um, where you can enter and do like hikes, and uh, you can enter freely. So this image over here is Shirakami Sanchi. It's one of the, uh, it's got, uh, it's made up of like virgin beach forest. So the core area hasn't been touched, and there are not like there are not many marked trails at all. So the trees in the core area, like they, they're like super old. And um, so if you want to see uh, like untouched forests, definitely the Shirakami Sanchi area is the place to be. Um, in the buffer zone, there are like lakes that you could hike to. There's a little mini, um, mini version of the Grand Canyon, I guess you could call it that, the Nihon Canyon. Um, you could go hiking there as well. Uh, the lake area, the Juniko Lake area, that one is also really nice because uh, the lakes there are so clear. Um, you could like see down and when the, depending on the weather, if it's like blue skies or like slightly cloudy, like the watercolor kind of changes too. Absolutely nice. So, so nice. Um, yeah, Shirakami Sanchi, if you're into hiking, um, definitely go here. I think um, I did a couple of hikes where... Uh, when I was there, I went to the Shirakami Sanchi area. I stayed overnight. Um, I think I hiked to one of the nearby mountains. Um, and from there, um, like if you hike along, like in the buffer zone, you could actually look down into the core area. And even that in itself is pretty nice. So this picture was taken when I went hiking. Um, and yeah, we hiked. I don't remember how tall it was, but I think the mountain was like over a thousand meters. And uh, yeah, we just look down and you just see like this huge expanse of like forest and you're like, wow, look at this. And it kind of makes you feel like, wow, you're kind of like small <laughs> in this huge forest. So yes, that's the Shirakami Sanchi area. So moving on, we've got the Seikan Tunnel, which connects um, Hokkaido and Aomori. So it's one of the world's longest um, longest tunnels. It's about 54 kilometers long and about half of that is underwater. And uh, if you have taken the regular train or the Shinkansen to Aomo, uh, to Hokkaido, you would have definitely um, passed through this tunnel. Unfortunately, on the, the local trains no longer run um, under the tunnel, only the Shinkansen. So if you uh, have vis if you visited or if you took the train to Hokkaido um, before 2016 that's march 2016 was when the uh um the hokkaido shinkansen started running so if you uh visited japan like pre uh, tw march 2016 you would have taken the local trains across the tunnel has anybody been to uh pass through the tunnel before uh the tohoku shinkansen the hokkaido shinkansen i'm sorry was opened. I think I have only done it once. Or maybe not. Actually, I don't remember. Has anybody taken the local train across? Oh, James, yes. Nice. You must have visited before 2016. But yes, uh, you can take the Shinkansen across right now and the Hokkaido Shinkansen is also really nice. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the sort of like the main focus of our um, visits. So Aomori City is um, 
the last part that I'm going to um, introduce about the prefecture. So Aomori City um, is actually famous for a couple of things. Um, one of which is the city's um, summer festival or the Neputa Matsuri or the Neputa Festival. It is as it is known. And this festival is one of the three big Tohoku festivals in Japan. And the Neputa Festival um, kind of looks like this. It's huge floats. Um, they measure about like nine meters to about like nine meters wide and about five meters tall. And um, as you can see in the picture, um, there are like lots of people pushing the 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 float, the festival float, and they all have like different designs on it, and they're all handmade, which is really really impressive. Um, and quite unlike like the smaller festivals where people like can carry like the the festival floats on their shoulders, um, this one has wheels, so people are like pushing it, but it's it's still pretty heavy. And so the Neputa Festival is really one of the big events of Aomori City. And the other two um, big Tohoku festivals are the Akita Kanto Festival. The Kanto Festival is like this bamboo pole festival where, uh, you, as you can see in the picture, has this huge long um, bamboo poles with like lanterns hung on it. And inside the lanterns, there are actually candles. So that's not like electric. Um, electric lanterns or anything these are like candle lit lanterns and um during the festival um the performers actually balance these along poles on their shoulders on their forehead or you know on their hands or on their hips and it's really impressive i think one pole is about like i don't know like three to five kilograms i'm gonna guess and like yeah, it's pretty impressive to like balance something with like maybe like dripping wax um, on your body parts. Uh, something that I, I, I think might be a bit hard for me to do. And okay, the last uh, Tohoku festival, the big one, is the Sendai Tanabata festival. So this one you get to see like these huge um, like streamers kind of, they're like really long, like three or four meters long. And they're all hung in the shopping arcade um, for people to see. And that one's also really nice. Has anybody been to any of the Tohoku festivals? We've got the Nebuta festival, we've got the Kanto festival, and we've got the Tanabata festival. Has anybody been to any of them? Alex, yes! Let us know, like, um, which one did you go to? Oh, so I actually haven't been to. Actually, I haven't been to any of the festivals. Um, I haven't been to the Neputa, neither the Kanto festival or the Sendai Tanabata festival. And oh, James, you've been to all three. Uh, I'm so jealous of you right now. Um, I'm like hoping uh to make it to see one of the festivals like when it's open again i think this year all the festivals got uh cancelled um because of the corona situation um so yeah one day one day i'll get to see uh i get to see one of these like major festivals and if you guys have been i'm super jealous of you all right so so that was uh, my um, short introduction to Aomori Prefecture. Um, kind of short, I guess, maybe it turned out a bit long. Um, yeah, let me know uh, what you guys thought about, like what you guys think about this introduction to Aomori Prefecture. Um, you know, honestly, when I was making this, I thought like, dang, Aomori Prefecture has so many nice things and I really want to get there. Um, I want to really want to go for a visit and I think if I visit I could probably do like an entire month just like traveling around and like doing all sorts of different things and experiencing the whole prefecture but anyway let's move on to the main content uh so Aomori city as I mentioned earlier is also um it's where oh Lloyd thank you for your nice comment uh Aomori city it's um we're gonna visit the Aomori fish market in the city 
Now, a uh, short quiz for everyone. Um, does anybody off the top of your heads, uh, where's one of the, what are some markets or fish markets you can think of? Yeah, the festivals in, um, so I'm just reading your comments or uh, the, the chat right now and I'm just thinking, yeah, the festivals in Japan, they're like really, really nice and um, yeah, with like the corona situation, like a lot of the big ones got cancelled. So yeah, I gotta wait till like the corona situation kind of settles down a little bit before we get to enjoy the nice outdoor fun things. Yes. Yeah, markets. Let's get let's go back to the fish market things. Um Tsukiji, Toyota Tsukiji. Yep, yep. Yeah. They're like super well known um Tsukiji fish market. So I'm pretty sure you guys already know, right? Uh the Tsukiji market, the inner market got um moved to Toyosu, so now like it's called the Toyosu market, but the outer market still exists. Um, the Tsukiji outer market, so the shops and restaurants are still there, so it's still, you know, a place to go and visit, to buy stuff, eat nice fresh seafood. Um, otherwise, if you want to see the auctions, you want to go to um, Tsukiji market. Ah, sorry, <laughs> Toyosu, Toyosu market. So yes, fish markets or uh, just markets in general. Uh, so... Markets in general, we've got, as somebody mentioned, the Tsukiji Fish Market. And um, as I said, uh, the outer market is still open, so you can visit. And the other one, uh, off the top of my head, uh, I've got the Osaka Kuromon Market. I, has anybody been to that one? Uh, that one is like this long um, shotengai or like this long shopping street uh, with lots of stalls inside selling like all sorts of produce and restaurants and restaurants where you can dine at and the next one i have is the kyoto's uh, nishiki market uh that sells a lot of um local products like kyoto style um, cuisine and food so these are like the three big ones in the big cities anybody know any local smaller ones in japan yeah, yeah. Those um, Japan is like a really nice place. I really like it here. Yeah. Uh, Life Life Submit says the markets in Kanazawa. Yeah, good point. The Omicho market in uh, Kanazawa. That one was also really nice. Um. I think I went a couple times and each time like you, you just eat like whatever's in season and uh oh Sumicraft says uh Hakodate and Shimonoseki yes Shimonoseki one is really nice because it's um famous for like fugu or puffer fish yeah lots of really nice markets and for today's video uh we're gonna be visiting the Aomori fish market so um, it's a small local market, so it's kind of intimate and not like super crowded, which is really nice and kind of what I like. Um, so instead of this long um, shopping arcade, we've got uh, kind of like kind of mini condensed version of a fish market. And it's got like four rows in the premises and about like 30 stalls. So that's the Aomori fish market. Now, before we get to... Uh, the video proper, I'm just going to do like a short recap of how to get to um, Aomori. And so from Tokyo to Aomori, uh, you can take the Tohoku Shinkansen. So Tokyo Station to um, Shin Aomori Station is about three and a half hours and it's about like slightly over uh, 700 kilometers and the Tohoku Shinkansen just, you know, it's so fast, it's so great, uh, it only takes you like three and a half hours. Now there are two passes that um, are great for um, getting to Aomori because I think the one-way journey, the one-way trip from Aomori, well from Tokyo to Aomori, it costs about like 18,000 yen um, and, or $180. So 
if $180 is like, oh, it's a bit expensive just for one way and a return trip is already $360. So you want to use passes, which, you know, foreigners are all eligible for. You can use the Japan Rail Pass, which is only available to um, foreign tourists. And it's a seven day pass, which costs about like 30,000 yen or about, well, what, uh, 29,650 yen or if you have a foreign passport or like a non-Japanese passport, um, you can purchase the JR East Pass Tohoku area, which is a five-day pass, and it only costs like 20,000 yen or $200. Uh, these passes are great because uh, it covers the entire journey from Tokyo to Aomori, and it's, you know, it's five days or seven days. And since you have like the pass, you, you, you know, you might as well... Um, travel to other spots in the Tohoku region as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a, Ashley makes like a really good point. As long as, uh, as soon as Japan admits foreign tourists again, I totally agree. I can't wait for you guys to come back, um, and like see this beautiful country. Yes. So can okay, you guys have any questions so far about the, the live stream or like the Aomori in general? Okay, so um, we're going to get started on the actual video itself. Um, we went in, uh, so Aomori Fish Market, we went in, I think it was early August or late July. Um, it was not so crowded um, and we went somewhere for lunch in the afternoon and it it was a really great experience, I thought, and it was the kind of place where I went and I was like, oh, I could totally see myself, you know, like popping in here and going again the next time I'm in like an Aomori. Like, why not? It's quick, easy, convenient, and it was just really interesting for me. All right, so um, we're going to get started on the video and let's go. So um, the Aomori Fish Market is about a five minute walk from um, Aomori Station and it's not too far to get to, you just kind of like go straight right and you're there. And the market has been in the city for about like 40 years so you know a lot of locals go there to shop and uh, visitors or people working in the area go there for lunch. So as mentioned earlier, the, the Gyosai Center, the fish market, is not massive. Um, it's made up of like four rows and about 30 stalls. And the highlight of visiting the fish market is actually making your own seafood bowl or nokedon, it is, as it is called at this market. So, but before we get started on making our nokedon, what we're going to do first is we're going to walk up and down like the rows just to check it out and see what it's like um, before getting to like the fun stuff. So at the market, um, because it's a fish market, you can like buy fish whole or you can buy them already filleted and uh, they're all packed really nicely and for you to bring home. Um, that's of course if you live in the area or um, you want to do some cooking. And um, one of the products that is actually really, really, really local is um, scallops. Aomori scallops. Um, Aomori is actually one of the second top producers of um, scallops in um, Japan. The first being Hokkaido and the Aomori scallops, most of them are actually grown in the bay right beside the city. And so you definitely know if you see like Aomori scallops, they're going to be local and you can buy them um, dried like now, like you see now. And 
you can also eat them fresh and buy them fresh which is also really nice So um, the market is also where locals go to buy the vegetables or fruit and um, of course seafood. Um, a lot of the fish sold at the market, they are also sashimi grade fish. So you know if you want to have like a sashimi feast at home, you can definitely drop by the market, buy it, slice it up at home, have an awesome dinner. So this over here, um, it's seaweed um, and this one over here is ikura which is uh, marinated in uh, or salmon roll which is marinated in soy sauce. So for us travelers, okay, buying like a whole fish or like a sashimi filet is like really hard. So um, there's also like dried um, food or dried fish, dried seafood that we can also purchase and bring home and that's um, that's easier to handle. If not, there are some stalls that sell like souvenirs, like really cute um, seafood fish related souvenirs and that's also really nice. So um, some of the stalls that are um, participating in like making your own seafood bowl, they will have like little uh, trays of um, sliced seafood and uh, already prepared. So when you're making a seafood bowl, be sure to look out for these uh, little trays of food. A lot of the seafood sold at the Aomori Gyozai Center or the fish market is actually really local and caught in the waters. Like, check out this octopus link! So this um, mackerel over here, the saba over here, is actually fished from the waters near Hachinohe, which we saw earlier. So for those of you who are just tuning in, um, we're in Aomori Fish Market right now and we're doing a virtual visit of the Aomori Fish Market. So this was the really cute uh, like fish related souvenirs I was talking about. I guess you could hang them on your mobile phones if hanging things on your mobile phone is still a thing now. So if raw stuff is not your uh, kind of thing, um, there's also cooked food. Um, uh, so like cooked fish or I think this is like cooked chicken. So you could also have some cooked meat options at the fish market. So scattered around like the market itself, um, there are a few like sitting areas. So um, you can take a rest there if you want, or um, you could. That's also where you would sit to um, 
to have your meal after. And they're like um, free tea and water, and it's all self service, so you can help yourself to it. Um, so this is also local seaweed, um, which you can like buy to put on to eat together with your seafood rice bowl. And this one over here, um, it's uni, um, sea urchin, one of my favorite foods to eat. So this fish over here, they um, they, it's all like sashimi grade, and uh, you can bring it home if you know how to like you know, fillet a fish. So you can bring it home and do it yourself. I'm not too good at it, so I think I'll stick to going to uh, sushi restaurants. So. Um, one of the nice things that I like about the Aomori fish market, it kind of feels like the Goldilocks of markets. It's not too big, it's not too small, and it's just like the right amount to um, to see like everything. And um, this is where the fun part starts. So I'm going to pause the video here for a bit and explain some things. So over here, as you can see, um, oh, I'm also wearing the same clothes just to um, just so that you guys know it's it's me. Um, anyway, jokes aside, um, as I was saying earlier, um, one of the highlights of um, the Aomori fish market is making your own personalized seafood bowl. So when you come in from the entrance, um, it's you immediately you would see the ticket counter. And at the ticket counter, uh, that's where you would purchase your tickets to... Um, <laughs> that's where you would purchase your tickets to to make your own seafood bowl. So nokke don is what uh, it's called making, well, nokke don is the seafood bowl that is made at, uh, that you would make at the Aomori fish market. And nokke, nokke means like nokkeru, which means to put things on top of something. And don means like donburi, which is like a rice bowl. So when you put it together, you got nokke don, which means like a rice bowl on which you put something on something. So if you think of it like, uh, I guess like, in terms of like Japanese, you have like gyudon, which is um, a beef rice bowl, gyu being like beef. Or you have like um, tendon, uh, which is tempura donburi, and it's like a tempura rice bowl. So here we're going to make the nokke don, which is the seafood rice bowl. And uh, I'm going to buy the, you buy your tickets at the ticket counter. And tickets uh, are sold in sets of five or ten. So five tickets cost like 750 yen and 10 tickets cost like 1,500 yen. So one ticket is about 150 yen or 150. Um, the Eugene asks that the rice topping, um, the rice is not all you can eat. Uh, it's, you have to exchange a ticket for it. So like a regular bowl of rice is about one ticket. And if you want more rice, you have to, you gotta guess, you gotta, buy it for two tickets um yeah so at um the aomori gyosai center all you do is you buy your tickets and then you get your rice and then you start using the tickets to um, buy your stuff of course um there's some stuff uh that are sold at the market as well that you can pay for in cash but that one it's not part of the nokke don thing um you you can buy that separately um except the portions might be a little bit big if you're traveling alone. Um, right, we're gonna keep going with the video. So over here you can see that I've purchased my tickets and um, the lady also passed me a little uh, ticket with a number on it. Now I'm gonna pause the video again. So over here, um, you just saw that the lady passed me like a ticket with like a red number on it. So it corresponds to where you can exchange your rice for. Uh, so over here on the screen, you can see um, it's a gohan, gohan no mise. It's got a big one. And on my ticket, there was a big one. So I would go to this store 
and um, exchange for my bowl of rice. When I say exchange, um, the bowl of rice costs like um, one one ticket or like one fifty, and the green posters. So in the market, um, I don't know if you guys noticed um, earlier when we were walking around, um, there were some stalls with like the blue signs or like the green signs or like the red signs. So red signs means um, that's where you get your rice from. And um, green is where you get your miso soup. So um, different stalls have like different kinds of miso soup. So you might want to check out like what kind of miso soup is available. And um, before exchanging, going there and getting your miso soup. And the blue blue posters, um, that's where you get your uh, sashimi for. Um, and like, yeah, you exchange it for your tickets there. Uh, Life's a Mitch is asking, how many tickets did you purchase? So uh, I thought I would be a bit conservative um, when I started because I was like, oh, I don't want to eat too much, you know, watching my weight. Ha ha ha. But so I started off with buying like a, 10 tickets. And I may or may not have bought more after. I may have. I did. Okay, I did. Um, but yes, I started off with like um, 10 tickets. Let's just put it as I started off with like 10 tickets. So um, you buy your tickets, they give you like a number with um, the where you get your rice from, you go exchange your rice, and then you're free to unleash yourself uh, to try and fill your bowl with as many as much seafood as you want. Okay, we're going to um, carry on the video. So when you're walking with your tickets, um, you definitely want to look out for the blue signs after you get your rice from the red signs. Uh, look out for the blue signs and that would sh um, indicate the shops that are selling like the ingredients for your noke don. So this is one regular serving of rice and it's actually quite a lot. So with your bowl of rice, when you get your bowl of rice, uh, the staff also gives you like a little tray so that um, it's easier for you to hold your stuff and walk around the shops. So um, I went for the Aomori um, scallops and the two that you can see behind it, it's um, how many tickets it costs. So. Uh, you would see like the numbers on the signs that are behind like the seafood. So a one means like that that little serve costs like one ticket. If you see like a two, uh, it costs two tickets. So uh, you just go to the store and when you're making your own noke don, you can just pick and I think you just go to the store, you like see what's available there and then you just like point and pick what you want. Uh, a lot of the cooked food, like the eggs, they're all like homemade and um, like the local stores, like individual stores have their own um, I guess styles and like flavors so you might want to like shop around to see and pick you know the pick pick the one that you think looks the best um sam van is asking how much is it for 10 tickets uh 10 tickets cost um 1500 yen so and five tickets cost um 750 yen So when I, when I was at this stall, um, 
I got a um, aburi salmon, which is like a grilled salmon. It's kind of cooked on the outside, but in the middle it's still raw. And the lady was like, here, here's a slice of egg for you as well. And I thought that was kind of a nice touch. So if you're unsure of what to order or what to get, like, you know, it's, you know, it's always fine to ask the stall holders, like you can ask them like what's in season right now or what's uh, what do you recommend? Or sometimes it's, you know, stall holders will just, you know, say like, oh, we got this this morning or this is like the local specialty, you know, do you want to try it? Um, yeah, it's feel free to ask the stall holders or if you're not sure like what ingredient that is, um, you could always point and like ask them like what is this uh i think like salmon or like tuna they're easy to identify but some of like the white uh, meat fish those are like there's so many different types and even i i can't tell what they were sometimes but the stall holders will be like oh this is like the local one from like aomori or like this was caught this morning yeah feel free to ask them So uh, the stall holders here, they are really, really good at arranging your seafood bowl so that it looks great. And like, you know, when you're done, it still looks picture perfect. It's not like this huge mountain that looks absolutely beautiful. So this one over here, um, it's a pregnant uh, squid. So it's the white stuff around it, it's the squid, and the yellow thing in the middle, those are the squid eggs. So uh, if you got like five tickets and you know, you pick um, items that only cost one ticket, so you got five tickets, um, your rice would already cost like one ticket and then you have like, you can pick like four other items. But so if you get like the 10 tickets, um, one, one ticket goes to rice and you still got nine options to fill your bowl with delicious things. I, that's what I did. This is a sliced octopus and it's already cooked. The, the octopus was steamed or boiled and it's not raw. Just, just in case you were wondering. So after you make your rice bowl, it's time to look for a seat. And I mentioned earlier, there are seats scattered all across the, uh, all around the market. And um, find your seat. Uh, there are chopsticks, soy sauce, and wasabi at the table. So you just help yourself. This was the first bowl we made. Uh, we've got egg over here. Um, we've got uni in the middle and ikura, like the salmon roll. I've also got uh, aburi salmon. That was also really good and um, scallops, uh, maguro, the tuna, as well as uh, ebi, prawns. I did, yeah, I did fill my bowl up. My tray was like kind of heavy at the end of it. And I was like, oh, this is a table. I, I, I'm so glad I ran out of tickets. I'm just going to put my, my bowl down and rest my arms for a little while. Um, we made two bowls at the market and this was the second bowl and in the middle, we also had like negi toro, um, which is uh, minced tuna mixed with uh, spring onions. That one was also really nice. And the striped fish that you can see in the corner, um, it's a uh, marinated, uh, what is that called? Marinated saba mackerel, saba mackerel. And that one was really good too. Leonardo is asking, uh, is there a local Aomori specialty to try at the fish market? I would say go the scallops because they're great. Oh, another one that, um, this one, uh, this is the 
the squid roe that I mentioned earlier and this is the cooked octopus. Another um, Aomori specialty if you see that the market would be the Oma tuna which uh, is fished in the waters of Chigata Strait. So after that introduction and I was getting so hungry just like walking around and like picking what to eat, the only thing left to do would be to eat the rice bowl. Itadakimasu! Uh, just so you guys know, um, this was actually sped up. Uh, I, I didn't eat at this. I didn't eat at this pace. I, I probably could have, right? So, welcome back to the studio, and um, that was our um, video of the Aomori Geosai Center in Aomori City. Uh, to answer some of your questions really quickly, um, Tom, ask, Tom is asking, is green tea available or do you need to pay for your drink? There are self-serve drinks that are free, so they are like tea and um, water that are located near your seats or near like the sitting area, so you can just go, um, go and help yourself to the drinks over there. Um, just reading some of your comments, uh, the... The local specialty to try at the fish market. A lot of the fish there are um, thing. I answered the question from um, Leonardo earlier. Uh, scallops, but a lot of the other fish there. Um, they are all fished in the the local waters, and um, you could just ask the storeholders. Sometimes um, they would have like different uh, seasonal specialties, uh, but most of them are all from like the Aomori area and tuna scallops and the other i tried some like white fish i think the mackerel was also from there i think as much as possible i was just trying to fill my bowl with like aomori specialties and i think some of the uni was also um from the aomori waters so depends on the season you're there and um what's available and uh Okay, before I start looking at the rest of your questions, um, if you have any questions about the Aomori Gyosai Center, please uh, put it in the chat. And before I look at the questions, I'm just going to go through the access information once again. So the Aomori Gyosai Center, or the Furukawa market, the fish market in the video that we just saw, is about a five minute walk from Aomori Station. So if you're traveling from Tokyo, um, you'll have to take the Tohoku Shinkansen from Tokyo Station all the way to um, Shin Aomori Station and then transfer to the local train one stop to Aomori Station. Now the one-way journey takes about like three and a half hours and it costs about 18,000 yen one way. Now um, a one-way trip is 18,000 so a return trip from Tokyo to Aomori and back is about 36,000 yen or about uh, 360 dollars. So there are two passes which um, would be really useful for tourists going there. Um, the Japan Rail Pass, which is a seven-day pass and costs uh, 29,650 yen. Now the Japan Rail Pass is only available for uh, to foreign tourists. So you need a foreign passport and like you have to be a temporary visitor to buy the pass. Now the Japan the JR East Pass Tohoku area. Now this pass is also valid to residents living in Japan and it's a five-day pass which costs um, 20,000 yen. And this pass is pretty useful at 20,000 yen. It already covers like the one-way journey to Aomori and if you go like a return, the pass pays off. Um, this pass is available, as I said earlier, to um, residents foreign residents living in japan so if you have a non-japanese passport you're eligible to buy the pass and passes are available that you can buy them from um, ticket machines with a passport reader at the major stations in tokyo um, 
you you have to bring your passport, you know, scan it and at the machines, and to buy a to to buy the JR East Pass to Hohoku area. Um, for those uh, who prefer, like you know, uh, guess buying it in person with uh, another person, um, the other place that you can check out is the Japan Rail Cafe at Tokyo Station. Now this place is actually one of my favorite places to hang out. Um, half of it is a cafe and half of it is a travel center. And the travel center bit is where you can um, buy your rail passes and you can also get like travel consultation. So you can ask like the staff there for help, like, oh, where's the best place to visit and um, where can I go or what, you know, what can I do there? Where can I stay? That place is also really convenient. And now if you have no questions, you can just head on to the cafe area, which has like a nice, it's really nicely decorated. And like the cafe area also has like food from the region. So it's kind of like a one stop shop for everything. So anyway, I'm uh, going to head into the um, head into the questions and see what um, you guys have. And if I did miss your questions, uh, please. Uh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Just like type it in again and I'll, I'll try to get to it. Uh, so Jolly Green um, earlier asked, when will Japan open up for tourism? Uh, it's not decided yet. We're still um, this. Uh, we're still in a state of uh, emergency. So like 21 out of 47 prefectures are still in a state of emergency. Uh, it doesn't look like tourism will open up this year, but hopefully, hopefully next year um yeah hopefully next year thing let's see alex um rocha rocha was asking what does aomori mean does it mean um blue forest so aomori um the is said to be named after blue forest in the area um which you know used to be uh where which used to be where aomori city is now um but the the blue forest no longer um no longer exists and uh but the ao in aomori could uh is used to describe like the color of the forest which is like ao means like green so it's like aomori like green forest um anibal chavez amaya says hello from peru i know samai maruyama historical site yes that is also in aomori um it's actually the best place to experience the jomon culture in japan um, you can see like excavations and reconstructions and there's like a good museum over there and the Jomon period is like the um, period from it's the prehistoric period from like 14,000 to 300 BC and it's I guess that's when like people were like kind of hunter gatherers and it was uh, the Sanai Maruyama site was actually a UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site um, it was actually designated in um, July 2021 just like a couple months ago and together with other like jomon period sites in um, the tohoku area i think lloyd asked earlier um summertime in uh aomori is it as hot as tokyo uh no actually aomori because it's so far north it's um not as hot as tokyo so slightly cooler so think kind of like similar ish to hokkaido weather um the daytime highs in summer is just about like 30 degrees or lower so nice and cool and not kind of humid and sweaty like like tokyo can get um joselle carlson asks um Dana, what's your favorite thing to put on your seafood don uh that's a really good question um i like to put uh, salmon uh, no, no no not salmon i mean hotate scallops are one I also like to put um, uni, uni. I, I do like uni, especially like when it's like really good uni. Um, what else do I like? I do like like the the tunas. The I not so much otoro because that is too fatty for me. I like chutoro, which is like the medium ones. That one's also nice. What else do I like in seafood? I like ebi for some reason. Like like the raw. The raw ebi that you put in your um, sushi, that one is nice. Um, and tamago, tamago is always good. So 
So these are like, the few things that I would like to put on my seafood dawn. Hope that answers your questions. Um, Sam Van asks, um, this fish market replaces the old one that was on fire. Uh, I'm not sure uh, which one, but a different one in Aomori City burnt down in uh, 2016, but that's not the, the Furukawa market. The, the Aomori Fish Center um, has been around for, for like 40 years and hasn't burnt down. Alex Quivenvo, uh, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, do they have photos for non-Japanese to understand what to buy at the ticket counter? Unfortunately, um, there's not much. There's no photos because a lot of the fish is seasonal and it really depends on um, the stalls. Um, their names are written in hiragana and uh, kanji, but aside from that, there's, there's not much english in translations for what each ingredient is um your best bet might be uh, google translate or um just asking what the fish are in um, japanese and maybe they can tell you like what it is in like simple japanese but i think aside from like some really specific ones the the major fish there i think they're easily recognizable um paul is uh Paul, Tokyo Paul 360 is asking, um, Reina, what's your favorite memory in Aomori? Uh, in Aomori Prefecture as a whole, I think I've got a few. One was, which uh, one was uh, I mentioned earlier, just like eating, eating all the apples that I could in during apple season. I think that trip when I went, I ate, I ate more than four apples in the course of a few days. Um, I was definitely eating more than one apple a day. And I did bring some apples home. So, uh, one apple is like about like four hundred, two two to four hundred grams. And I I did, I did pack my bag a little a little tightly when I came when I went home. Um. The next question is. <laughs> I I can't pronounce this one. Uh, e W P H O. I'm um, watching this at four a.m. is making me very hungry. It all looks so good. Um, I'm sorry it made you so hungry. Um, I I'm just just doing the live with you guys now is also making me really hungry. Um, so yeah, I guess that's like the both of us and maybe anyone else who's like hungry watching this uh watching this video. yeah um yeah pretty much so um, when you visit the fish market i really recommend uh so you kind of like do a tour of it yourself first um walk around to see what's available and like check out like um i think i want this i think i want that and then you go buy your tickets and exchange your thing or you could do like what a lot of people were doing when we were there um, they get to the market um they buy the tickets and um, as they just walked around, they just walked a little slower and just like decide and check what they want before, you know, committing to putting it on their rice bowl. Um, uh, Red Light Black is asking, um, that looks amazing. I may have missed it, but what was the going cost of one of your bowls? Uh, so I mentioned earlier, I started off buying, um, a set of 10 tickets which was a thousand five hundred yen um ended up buying more tickets so the bowl at the end i think it cost about two thousand yen which i think is really reasonable considering like how much fish there was and um everything is all fresh and local which i really really appreciate it and of course you know i ate it and uh, it was so 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 good and i definitely want to go back um let's see <laughs> how different is this uh edat tan is asking uh how different is this market compared to omicho uh michiba uh omicho is kind of like in omicho is in the is the market in kanazawa so it's the one where uh you have 
it's kind of like there are like a few lanes and lined with shops and restaurants and like seafood and everything um omicho market is like on a large scale like on a way bigger scale compared to the um aomori fish market and the aomori fish market kind of feels more intimate and uh compact and whereas the omicho market you have like these seafood stalls and big ones and they and crab in omicho market is one of their major major specialties so when you get there you get to see like mountains of crab everywhere and they there are definitely more stalls there selling um cooked food vegetables fruit and so i feel like omicho market has more uh i guess vegetables and um vegetables and fruit compared to uh the aomori fish market when we were there it was mostly i think I would say like 90% of the stalls sold seafood. So I think that's like one of the biggest um, difference. Uh, Ken Wan asks, is, is wasabi okay? Wasabi scary? Oh, no, no, like wasabi is nice. Um, I like wasabi, but not too much. I'm not going to eat like, you know, I'm not going to eat like a, a big thing, but a little bit is nice. Um... So uh, every Miller is like a cookie monster ring. This is my uh, cookie monster ring. I don't know if you guys can see it. So uh, I bought this from one of the gacha machines. So I have a weakness for that. I'm sure most of you do. Um, if I see one, I, I have to go look at what's available. So I got this at um, one of the gacha machines. I think it was like 200 yen and I really like it. Uh, Life's Image asks, have you tried the Tsugaru stove train up that way? Um, it looks really nostalgic, haven't made it quite far north yet. Uh, no, I've heard about it, but one of my friends actually took it and like she really enjoyed um, the, the stove train. It's uh, so the train where you sit inside and I think that's the... It only runs in the winter and you get to like um, barbecue like uh, some dried seafood and then eat it on the train. And like the, they have like uh, gasoline, like kerosene stoves in the train so you're like nice and warm when it's cold outside um she really enjoyed it um but i haven't taken it myself personally yet um next one uh, paul three tokyo paul 360 says um apples the Fuji apples are my favorite. I wonder if that's what you ate or maybe another variety from Aomori. Um, I ate, when I did apple picking there, I ate like four different kinds of um, apples. I think one of them was the Fuji apple. That one was really good. Um, I also ate, what did I eat? I ate some, I ate like four different kinds and they were all good. And, and then I bought more apples. Um... All right, so, um, so all right, so that's all the time uh, we have for the live stream. It was super fun to be talking about Aomori Prefecture and visiting the Gyosai Center together. Um, super enjoyed it, and I kind of want to do this soon. Um, sorry if it's uh, late at night where you guys are um, and watching this video made you hungry. It's almost lunchtime here, and guess what I'm gonna have? Guess what I? Here's what I prepared earlier. Got some sushi. I'm gonna eat some sushi for lunch, and I hope that you guys um have some uh sushi, or inspires you to have uh, maybe sushi or sashimi sometime later this week. Now um in two days from now on September third at the same time, uh, Matt is also gonna be doing his live stream. Um and he's going to um, Yamadera in Yamagata. So stay tuned for that, and don't forget to set your calendars. Your um your watches or set a reminder for another live stream in two days um so thanks for watching until the next live stream this is reina signing off Jane.